I'm currently working this small New England six board chest for school. Grain direction is somewhat tricky in this rather simple piece. For example, if the grain direction in the end components is vertical, there could be a cross grain expansion contraction issue with the horizontal grain in the front and back components. Therefore, the grain direction in the end component should also be horizontal and match up with the front and back. I need to make this grain direction quite visible in the drawing to avoid mistakes in the construction. One way is to show the grain with various wood textures. For example, here is a pine texture that I created. However, these dark textures make it more difficult to see edges and dimensions in the drawing. These realistic textures have their place in displaying furniture models, but for me, they should not be used for drawings in the shop. I find them distracting and an impediment to reading a drawing. I noticed that early drawings by architects apply a very unobtrus unobtrusive way of showing grain and I set out to duplicate this method. In a minute, I'll show you how I made these very pale but effective grain direction textures. I'll choose the horizontal example, open the front component for edit, and click on the front face. Notice that it is rather gray and muted in color so as not to interfere with construction data and edges. I'll open the end component and paste the same horizontal texture. Click on the surface and there's some end grain showing here so I pick an end grain and click on the edge, front edge here and also on these inside cutouts. I can go ahead and, well I shouldn't have put end grain on that on the side. I need the horizontal texture and here it is. So now the grain is shown on portion of the components and it certainly does show the direction without without hurting the, the drawing readability. Now let me show how I made these patterns and move up to the top here of my workspace. I made a rectangle face here about the size of the chest front. I chose the freehand tool and scribed horizontal lines on the face. I captured the image with a screen capture tool and doctored this with an image processor and a soft focus feature. That muted the lines sufficiently. So here, let me go through some of those steps quickly. Making the rectangle first. And then picking or choosing the freehand tool. I rarely, if ever, have ever used this tool. Make a horizontal line, click to select it, and then copy that line and pull the copy down, oh, say about this distance, and then type X, I don't know, X6 or 7 or whatever, that creates a bunch of these edges. And I can now create another style of grain that may be further apart, like this. And again, select, select the line, pull down a copy, 
and I'm going to make a further distance separation and x 15 or so that's too many went over the edge of the rectangle so I'll just do a left to right I mean a right to left selection there and knock those off so at this point I capture I use my screen capture tool to capture that image. Now it's a JPEG or a .png file. I save that file and I bring it into an image processor, a simple one, and choose that soft focus feature to knock out the hard black as you can see the, the difference here. Then I imported these images as, as a texture so that they appear in the materials dialog box, which is over here you can see the dialog box. It's easier to apply the materials in the exploded views so there is easy access to all the components from all directions. So there are a few places that I've don't have the grain direction, uh, the top for example, edit the component, pick the materials tool and horizontal grain, horizontal grain yes, and there's a little molding here that will just use the horizontal grain and some edges. The back edge will be a horizontal grain. And now I need, I really need the uh, end grain uh, pattern texture. And here's the end grain and the end grain. Now the bottom component that's captured between grooves and the two ends, here's the bottom, that's a little bit of a problem because the grain direction showing here is opposite from what it is on the ends, which is going to cause an expansion contraction problem. So it's best to use plywood for that bottom piece. So now I've got a way of, of showing the grain 